Welcome to One Under. I'm your host, Adon, and today I have my co-host, Lucy. Hey, and, guys. And we're going to talk about mental health illness. And we're going to start by saying that we're not professional in the subject, but, you know, we're just as a simple conversation between two adults, we're just going to discuss some of the points that pretty much bring us to this topic. Yeah, guys, so first we want to address what is defined as a mental illness. So for that, we look to the American Psychiatric Association. If you look up at psychiatry.org, it defines a mental illness uh, as being health conditions involving changes in emotion, thinking, or behavior, or a combination of these. Mental illness can be associated with distress and or problems functioning in social, work, or family activities. And you know, most important of all, they point out that mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. So we want to hit like, I guess, about five points very quickly. We're not going into depth, but we feel that this is a topic that needs to be addressed. And we know that May is mental illness like month. That's when people address it more. But I feel that this is something that should be discussed daily. And we both thought that it would be a good topic to cover. Definitely. And then, um, you know, Looking at it from different perspective, especially from the law enforcement field, I think it's uh, one of those um, topics that a lot of people wish not to talk about based on, you know, how all the stigma that a lot of people has about it. Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's a taboo in many communities, including the law enforcement also. Why, why are people... St- maybe ashamed to discuss it or why are they afraid to discuss it? Well, a lot of people like in the law enforcement field has um, different point of view in regards to mental illness. And I think a lot of people don't really talk about it because they might feel some sort of, um, probably because they are afraid. Some, you know, some people are scared to talk about it even though, they might be the one uh, or the victim of it. They might be feeling some sort of, you know, weird thoughts and stuff like that. And it's kind of complicated when you approach anybody and you're trying to talk about it. It's 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 kind of tough for a lot of people to it's talk complicated. about. It's a complicated subject to address, topic to even think about and talk about amongst not only seniors in within the rank, but also with coworkers, right? And then also... You know, based on what a lot of people do in the law enforcement field, um, one of the things that could pretty much lead you to have some sort of mental illness is the stress. Because as everybody knows, you know, cops and law enforcement, whether it's FBI agent, police officer, community officer, stuff like that, they go through a lot of, a lot of craziness and, you know, there's some sort of level of stress that they can really handle. And that probably one of the cause that could lead people to um, mental health. Absolutely. I think that fields such as the medical field also has this high level of, you know, stress that can affect a person's well-being, including the mental health. And I think that in that capacity is also, you know, very careful, just like law enforcement, to talk about it. Like you have to worry about you know, not only being discriminated against, which can actually happen, but also how people will look at you. But it's also a lot of things, too, because, um, you know, some people has this uh, trauma Mm -hmm. based on what they see, you know, based on what they go through, based on the situations, not only on the street, because, you know, people tend to believe that when you work in this field, it's, you know... um, just because what what whatever you go through outside on the street, but it's also the inside, you know, the things that you have to go inside, and not not only based on 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 the on the job, but also you know a lot of people get sick, uh, coworkers, uh, bosses, and other people that works around you that in a way, it might affect you, you know, when you hear oh this person. Uh, is sick or this person is going through this or this person is, you know, passed away and stuff like that. So those type of trauma that um 
implicate the inside plus the outside, you know, could lead you to some of this uh, illness as well. That's great insight into that um, topic because I think most of us have that perspective that the trauma or that what really affects law enforcement and members of that community, um, whether it be whatever area of law enforcement they are part of, is that it's mostly what we're thinking that could affect them is exactly like you said, the outer factors, going to a job and the violence associated with that. But it's also compounded by the fact of the inner inner um, environment. environment within relations to what's going on with coworkers, relation to, you know, dealing with different situations that are inside and not outside. So we've already addressed some of the things that can lead to mental illness, which is stress. We I think that's something that we stress, all know about. Trauma. Trauma. And also um, a point that we haven't mentioned is a history of mental illness can also be something that leads to mental illness. And of course, it's it's uh, also can be a biological. It can be a chemical imbalance within your system. And I think that if there's a chemical imbalance within your system, and, excuse me, a chemical imbalance within your system, and then you also have the stress of human normal life, then you're also encountering trauma, and then you're dealing with stuff inside and outside. It just all compounds and builds. And it's it's really important to seek help and I think that the qualifying factor really, as was described, is conditions that affect your your social work or family activities is that this situation, whatever it may be, whether it be depression or of anxiety or other related um, illnesses or any mental health in illness, is that it's disrupting your daily life. Um, the question will be, when should people seek? for help when it comes to, you know, mental illness? When should people seek for help? I think that you need to seek help when it's disrupting your daily life. Like, for example, I can't go to work because I can't even take a shower today. Um, what's another example? Um, Not being able to function, worried about driving and getting into an accident, be accident because you can't focus or a high level of anxiety that you are afraid, oh my gosh, I'm so jittery and I'm worried about tomorrow so I can't even address today. So not being able to be present in the moment would be one. Um, not being able to take care of your personal hygiene, I think would be another, or severe intense feelings of sadness or even elation. Maybe some people don't realize that this ultra burst of energy all of a sudden is actually not normal, but we don't, sometimes we don't auto analyze, maybe for other, for many reasons, maybe because we don't want to confront it, accept it, or we're just, you know, hiding behind everything else that we're putting our mental health at the, in the back seat. Sometimes I think people don't really notice by themselves um, when they go going through this type of emotion, like anxiety you know, um, depression, and when, when they feel like they don't want to do things. Um, one of the other things that I see is also that a lot of people, when they're going through this type of emotion, they kind of isolate themselves. They don't want to talk. They don't want to um, communicate that much. They don't want to get involved when it comes to socializing and stuff like that. Some people, they just isolate themselves. And that could be one of the key point when you um, notice some people that, you know, um, the, the the way they operate, the way they behave is, you know, uh, totally different when this type of emotion comes to them because you could see from the distance the changes, you so know, you the change. Observe. Yeah, the changes, you know, the mood, how they talk, how they, you know, what could trigger them and stuff like that. So I think... Isolation is one of the key points when you're trying to observe or when you're trying to notice from the distance. Because like I said, for a lot of people, they, they're they not able to notice themselves that they're going through this type of emotion. Yeah, that's, a, that's excellent. That's a good point sometimes. And it's good to be observers as well. Um, 
not in a sense of you know we're looking in to see what who's who hasn't a problem but more as um an aid more as a listen if you need to talk i'm here we don't have to bring it to other people um we can just discuss it amongst ourselves or here is a book that i'm reading that's um shown other people who have gone through similar things and you might be able to relate you never know you know get a second um insight yeah also um I think um when you're going through stuff like that even if you don't notice yourself it's good to have some someone to talk to you know from from time to time someone that you could go to and uh pretty much vent you know say how you feel how things are going with with you with your family at work and stuff like that because um for a lot of people like I said before it's kind of hard for them to express themselves in a way that they could open up to others and you know telling how they feel how things going whether it's uh, you know financially um family stuff like that and based on you know what we see normally out there it's 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 tough for, for a lot of people but I, i believe that if you have somebody to talk to someone that you could go to and you know just let out everything that you have inside or whatever you're feeling that might be helpful. Oh, it definitely will be helpful in many ways. I think where we can seek help is first with our close ones, with those who we know, our friends, um and we can seek guidance. We can talk to our pastors, our loved ones if we have a mentor. And I think that um right here we go right into what is therapy and how can therapy help and why is therapy a good option? I mean therapy is a treatment intended to relieve or heal a disorder. So I think that the number one of the things that happens when we have a mental illness or when we see someone who has a mental illness that it's a very for many it's a feeling of as I brought this on myself or I should be trying harder or I'm not doing enough. But no, the simple fact that you even are able to acknowledge and see that there's an issue that there's a problem is already has merit. And there is no there is no shame in asking for help and there is no I'm um, doing my best I can. Yeah, of course we have to put in an effort, but when we're in a situation of let's take for example severe major depressive disorder, it's not that you don't want to do anything, it's that sometimes you're physically unable to do anything and that's when it's good for us as people who may be around that person to come alongside them, give them a phone call, say do you want to go out and have some coffee and just talk. Even if you're not directly addressing how they're feeling, just getting in touch with them is already a a signal of hey, I'm I'm watching out for you. I'm aware that you're not around. I think those are things that are not only helpful but necessary. And I do want to mention before we end, I want to make sure that we hit that we address that there is actually a national suicide and crisis prevention hotline that the US has it's you just hit 988 which i think is very easy very simple to remember um and when we were looking into this topic we wanted to make sure that we had something that we can you know provide for you to remember easily and not just bring address the topic without giving you um an outreach that you can use yeah um you know some people i don't know why but um even when you get to that point that you need therapy that you need to talk to you know a professional or things like that um i don't know why for some people they rather reject all that type of um i would say medication or or even therapy or even therapy well i've come across individuals who have discussed with me that this person is a stranger why should they talk to them that another reason that i've heard especially from younger people is that you know they don't really care they're being paid to listen but the reality is is that they could have chosen any profession right a therapist could have chosen to be something else they could have gone and and if they wanted to do something they could have go and be a school guidance counselor or they could have chosen to be anything else but they chose this profession because they care they think that they can provide insight and they went to school and did their medical internships in order to provide help and they're getting paid because they also have to make a living well i would say it's also you know um 
it's good to look for professional help because even though they're getting paid or, you know, some people might think that they don't care, they do. Because it's like in the law enforcement field, you do have people that they have, you know, they do the job because they're passionate about it. Some other people do it because they love it. Some other people do it for the money. Some people do it for security because they need, you know, a, sec a secure job. Secure. So they could, you know, be able to provide to their family. But at the same time, if you in need, it doesn't matter who you go to. Me. As long as you get the help and the, and the treatment that you need. So, you know, that's what I would say. And we pretty much cover all the key points that might be, you know, um, good I, to mention. And I did want to mention one thing that I think a lot of people... Um, I know just myself growing up on even later within members of certain communities, for example, the Christian community, um, speaking about mental illnesses in some occasions was very taboo or you have a feeling of being judged of you're not Christ. You're not seeking Christ enough. And I think that the same thing, sometimes people feel that they're not doing enough. So it kind of it's a parallel. So I wanted to bring um, to light. The, there's someone in the Bible named Job, your oh, Job, yes, Job, that actually struggled with emotions and likely had depression during this major ordeal. If we look at um, the book of Job in the um, Old Testament, and we look at Job 2, he says, he's speaking to God. Are you still holding on to your... Oh, his wife actually says this to him, actually. Let me correct myself. His own wife at one point asked him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. That is Job 2.9. 2, 2, and then we see that in Job 3.11, Job himself said, why did I not perish at birth? That sounds like someone who's really low, right? Meaning like, why am I alive? And he says, and he continues to say, and die as I came from the womb. Later on in the chapter, he goes on to say, I have no peace. No quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. Now, that sounds, does that sound somebody who can get on with their daily activities? No, this is, sounds really. like, no. This is someone who has, um, is in a lot of pain, has lost a lot. During this ordeal that um, this book addresses, he has trauma from losing his children. And very consecutively, his finances, his wife no longer... I mean, she never was, um, it didn't seem like she was there in the sense of talking with him to be supportive. For example, when she said, are you still holding on to your integrity? And she's cursed God and died. That's not somebody who's empathetic at all. And finally, in um, chapter 30, he's con he says, in chapter 10, he says, I loathe my very life. Therefore, I will give free reign to complain and speak out in bitterness of my soul. And in chapter 30, he, and he adds, terrors overwhelm me. My life ebbs. Days of suffering grip me. Night pierces my bones. By gnawing pains never, my gnawing pains never rest. So this is not a, new to the human condition, right? Job experienced this and we still experience this today. And he found refuge in God and he found rest in seeking him and being honest with himself. He didn't pretend that he was okay. And I think that's important, Adam, to to acknowledge that we're not there's times when we're not okay. And just because you go to therapy today doesn't mean you have to go to ter therapy tomorrow. 